Hey, welcome to Hey How's That Work with Luca. That's me, I'm Luca. Today we'll be talking about how does your watch know what day or time it is? Well, what time it is is a given, but what day it is and what month it is and maybe what year it is. How does it know all this stuff? Is it a series of ropes and pulleys operated entirely by ants? No, because ants really only live to be four years old and that would be child labor. We need to engineer ants with longer lifespans and then this could be a, a possibility. But until then, we're gonna look at this no ant involved system right now. Here we go. <laughs> to be fair, pharaoh ants can live to be 12 to 14 and other species of ants can live up to 15 years, but garden ants are what we're talking about. So, I mean, either way. It's So, the date change, how's that work? You have three main categories of your date change mechanisms. You're going to have your direct drive, you're going to have your semi-instantaneous, and your instantaneous. This is in reference to how quickly the date jumps. The Rolex Datejust has the instantaneous date jump, the Nautilus has the semi-instantaneous, and the Seamaster Aquaterra has the direct drive. The main difference between the direct driven and the semi-instantaneous and instantaneous is the presence of a jumper. But why? Why have all these different systems? Well, that all comes down to the specific watch and the needs of the watch. So say if you have a quartz watch, which as we've said before, doesn't have a lot of torque because it's all being driven by that battery and batteries don't generate a ton of torque. So to keep the torque low, you need to have that date change happen over a long period of time. The same thing is true when you get multiple functions changing at midnight. So say if you have your day, your month, and say like a moon phase all changing at the same time, it's gonna to draw too much power from the watch doing all of those date changes at once. So that's when you see the instantaneous, the semi-instantaneous, and the direct drive. They're all kind of a per watch basis depending on what all's going on in the watch. We're first going to take a look at your directly driven slow date change, as you'll see in the Aquaterra. That's what we have right here. You also see it in a lot of quartz watches. Uh, this is a quartz watch, for example. So there is an hour wheel. This is going to mesh with what's called your intermediate wheel. On that wheel is a pinion. We talked about pinions in another episode. And that in turn is going to mesh with a 24 hour wheel, which has a finger fixed to it. The finger is just this little fingery looking bit. Every day, the finger is going to turn what's called a Maltese cross. That's this funky looking gear with these weird angled teeth on it. If you draw the shape out around it, it kind of looks like a cross, which is, that's why it's the Maltese cross. So the finger will turn the Maltese cross 90 degrees. The cross will carry a pinion with eight teeth or leaves on it. And this is constantly meshed with the date indicator. So. The pinion will revolve one quarter of a turn, which is corresponds to two teeth, and this will drive the date indicator at the same time. Uh, this date indicator actually has 62 teeth, so two will be moved per day. This entire process, start to finish, takes about four to six hours, depending on the watch. But uh, the reason it happens so slowly is actually because your quartz watch has limited torque, doesn't have a ton of torque to do an instantaneous date jump, so it has to happen slowly. Uh, just to, to limit the amount of power being consumed from the watch at any one given time. So, now we're gonna look at the semi-instantaneous and instantaneous date jumping mechanisms. In the semi-instantaneous system, we'll have what's called a jumper. The jumper will be sitting between two teeth on the date wheel. The date wheel is this big white bit around the outside with the numbers on it. Those are the days. The space between the teeth correspond to those days. There are 31 teeth, hence 31 days. So the jumper will be resting between two of these teeth and it's gonna be held in place by a spring. At about midnight, the finger will start to move the date indicator and the tip of one tooth will lift the jumper a little bit. Uh, this is gonna continue for a little while until that critical moment when the driving force of the finger and that of the jumper spring are equal. At this point, the jumper will overcome the force of the finger and the jumper will quickly force the tooth forward until the position of rest is reached until it indicates the right day. 
basically the power behind the jumper will build up slowly and the jumper will slowly start to turn that wheel until finally the power behind the jumper is greater than that of the finger holding the wheel in place. So when that happens, then the jumper will just click to the next space um, and that'll be pushed by the spring holding tension on the jumper and that changes the day. So the next we're gonna look at is the instantaneous. It's, it's, well, it's instantaneous. Uh, the main difference between this and the other two is, well, it all happens at once. This, I mean, it doesn't all happen at once. This process is building up over time, building up tension, but the date change happens at once. So you have a date lever with a pin on it. The pin of the date lever is sitting in a recess between the teeth on the date wheel. Pushing on this lever is a spring that's just going to hold tension on it to hold it in place. Then about seven hours before midnight, the finger on the 24 hour wheel will rotate all the way around to where it begins pushing against a little tooth or a little beak or something, a little pointy bit on the date lever. As this wheel turns, it's going to put more and more tension on a spring pushing against that lever. And so eventually the pressure behind the finger on the 24 hour wheel will be greater than that of the spring holding the date lever down. That's when it snaps down into that gap between the teeth. That's when the date change happens, typically within five minutes. But like I said, this process, the tension behind the date jump takes several hours. However, the date change itself will occur within five minutes of midnight. And it really depends on the manufacturer's spec. Like Rolex, for example, it's kind of split. So you want maybe like two and a half before, two and a half after midnight, it, the date change happening within that span. But like I said, just depends on the manufacturer. Now the main thing to keep in mind between these three is they're going to consume progressively more torque, power, amplitude from the mainspring at any given time. So that's the main difference. This consumes the least amount of torque, this consumes the most amount of torque, and this one's kind of a, a medium, kind of like a, a Goldilocks three bears. It's too hot, too cold, it's perfect, it's nice. You've seen the bears. You've seen the bears, you know how it works. So that's how all that stuff works. You have different systems and different watches depending on how much power the watch has. That's, well, that's how that works. That's how your date change works in your watch with Luca. That's me. Um, like, subscribe, click the bell icon if you want to see more stuff when we post it. And, uh, you know, if you find something out there in the world and you want to know how that works and you don't know how it works and it's watch related, then post it in the comments and we'll take a look at it and see if, well, I'll see if I can figure out how it works and then Maybe I can in turn make a video where I teach you how it works. And then, hey, we both know how it works. Yay. So that's, that's it. That's the video. Uh, have a beautiful day. Goodbye now.